about it. Real quick in this video, I am going to demonstrate how you install um, the CDA 6.14 uh, virtual machine for this Chrysler engineering software. Uh, this particular software, usually people will sell it. They, you know, have to remote into your computer and set up all kind of weird stuff. And then you can have, you know, hard copy on your computer. Um, that way works great if you want to put it on like a sandbox machine you don't want to put it on your main unit you definitely uh some of those sellers you definitely want to be careful of but this particular one that i have is a vmware so everything is contained in the virtual machine uh, so it's really easy to set up you just have to download the virtual machine and run it and you're good now you do have to have a micropod 2 a clone works fine i guess the originals works fine as well um, but i've already got this stuff downloaded but we're going to go through the steps here so the first thing you have to do is get the ova file which i do have in the pc apps and documents section uh, and then you're going to have to download this vmware workstation now i have put this on omega where you can download it it is the official installation file that i downloaded from broadcom myself uh, about a week ago um, i had vmware workstation 16 pro that you know i had paid for but that one didn't work actually i had to upgrade to 17. Uh, thankfully 17 is free to use if you use it as a personal use um, thing they don't charge anymore like they used to but uh, you can download it at my link right here, or you can go to Broadcom's website and download it from them yourself if you want to. If you don't trust my link, that's fine. Uh, so you're going to download that, and you're going to install it. Just the basic installation for that. You know, you just click yes to whatever it's telling you to do. Uh, you're going to activate it. If you have a registration key for commercial use, you can put it in. Uh, if not, just select uh, personal use, which is free to use. Okay. After that, we have to also download this OVF tool. And this is an application that's for VMware. And what this does is it allows you to import OVA files that are over two gigabytes. So VMware Workstation 17 itself is limited to import two gigabytes or less for OVA files from what I read. Uh, so the only way to import it correctly is to use this OVF tool, which, which is fine. It's, it's very simple to use. So after you download that, you download this. And again, you can go search for the official page if you want, but I have provided a link here for uh, the same thing at, that I put on Mega. But again, if you don't want to trust my link, you don't have to use it at all. It's not a big deal to me. Okay, so we're going to install that. And after you install that, nothing will happen. It will just install. This is a, just a you know a command that you have to run in the command prompt to get it to work. And that's what we are going to do now. Now we're going to run OVF tool, and we're going to use that to import into the workstation. Okay, now this takes a long time because this file... The CDA 6.14 VM file OVA is 30 gigabytes, okay? So it's going to take a long time to download it, first of all, and it's going to take a long time to import it with the OVF tool. Okay, so once you have everything downloaded and installed, the next thing we're going to do is open our command prompt. And we are going to go to where it's telling us to go and I think this is where it's installed for me too but it is okay good okay so you're gonna go to where it's installed that that was the standard installation so that's where it should be for you as well unless you changed it and once we are here we're just gonna type in exactly what it's telling us here we're gonna type in OV F tool dot exe and do a space now this next spot is the location of the download 
for the CDA uh, file that you downloaded. All right, now let me see what mine is. So I just have it renamed CDA 6.OVA. Uh, you have to take note of what you save it as, okay, because and mine is in the D drive. So you can't copy word for word what mine is. You have to remember where you saved yours and what name you saved it as, okay? So that's the first part. That is where the file is at. The second part is where you want it to go. So I want it to go into my D drive and I want it to go into my VMS2 folder. Okay, now you don't have to add anything after this because it's going to create its own directory. So inside of this VMS2, which for me it stands for Virtual Machine Systems Folder 2 because I got two folders of different ones. But it's also going to create this CDA6. You see the CDA6.OVA? Whatever this name is for your file, it's going to create that directory inside of the VMS. So you don't have to copy this because this would be VMS CDA6 and then it would give another folder CDA6, which, you know, if you're weird like me, you don't like redundancy like that. So uh, I'm just going to do that and I'm going to hit OK. And this is going to take a very long time. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to type the name correctly. It's CDA6.OVA for me. Okay, now this unsupported values, you might get these. Uh, that doesn't matter. This is just whoever created this virtual wear. I didn't. I didn't create it. Um, this must have just been settings for their computer, which is not compatible for mine. Maybe it will be compatible for yours. Maybe it won't. I don't know, but we can ignore that, okay? And right here we see it's opening the VMX and the target is VMS2, right? And it's now writing the file, VMX file, to D, VMS2 CDA6. And then here we can see the file. Okay, and you can see the percentage is going really slow. So I'm going to pause the video for a little while until this is done and then we will go to the next step which is pretty basic we're just going to import it uh, in the VMware workstation itself after that so alrighty so everything is done here we can see it says transfer completed uh, successfully so now we're going to go ahead and open up our VM workstation software we are going to go over here and click file and we're going to go to open and now we need to go to where we installed the OVA file so where we imported that to which I did VMS2 and then it's in this CDA6 here and in here there's going to be three files we have this uh, VMDK, which is the main one. As you can see, that's you see how big it is. There's 34 gigabytes now. Before it was 30, but now that it's extracted, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, but we need to run this VMX file, okay? So we're just going to click that, and that's going to bring up this window. Now, I'm going to edit this, and I'm going to delete the CD drive. I'm going to delete this floppy. Everything else is okay. Uh, you can come in here and you can, you know, set these settings however you want. I'm going to leave them just like this. Uh, I like to do enable drag and drop so I can drop files and stuff in there, but you can cut that off if you want. Okay, so once you have that configured the way you want, you're going to hit okay. And now you're going to hit power on virtual machine and this will take a little while because it's got to boot up and it's got to uh, configure itself to your computer um, so we just have to wait here so it looks like this windows 10 
and uh, I'll probably pause this until it's loaded. Okay, so it loaded a little bit. Uh, it kind of looks like it's frozen, but it's not. This one takes a really long time to first initialize. Uh, so just set it and walk away for a little bit. I guess because it's so big, you know, that it, it takes a long time like that. But just be patient and it will finish up. And then it shouldn't do this anymore. Like once this does this is initial setup, then it starts up and shuts down like normal uh, without without too much delay. So. All right, so it took a while to initialize. You just have to be very patient. It's a big file, so it, you know it takes a while. Uh, but as you can see, uh, here is the system. Everything is installed. Uh, this is the CDA software right here. I can double click it. And it will open up. Now I don't have a micropod right now to demonstrate it, you know, connecting. But I'll, I'll show you how you go into it. Okay. Yep. So right here, it's saying this license verification. If you try to hit login right now, it's not going to work. It says access denied. Uh, all you have to do is hit this work offline button here, and then you hit log on. And it's usually faster than this. I think it's because it's the first, you know, I just set it up that it's a little bit slow. But uh, here you'll see it, it It go ahead and logs in. And it comes up with this screen here. This screen is where when your micropod is installed, your micropod will be here. And then you would select it and it connects like that. And then you can go into your different options here. Um, it's it's a little bit different than like if you're used to WeTech. This is the engineering software, so it's a little bit to get used to. Uh, I, I'm not going to explain how the software works right now. Um, like I said, I don't have my micropod to demonstrate that, and I don't know a lot about it myself because I don't use it too often. I haven't really had time to fiddle with it too much, but. I know that it has uh, three different modes. It has uh, in car, like if a module, if you're connecting with it in car. So in that connection type, after you hit connect, you you have other options here to pick, like connect everything in the car. And then it has a prototype that's got some weird. Uh, I guess it was some proto prototype stuff they were doing at the time that this software come out. And then you have bench mode, and bench mode is what you need the database files for because the uh, I guess they're there to you know say which uh, you know PIDs and stuff that each module has that I, I, I don't know it's that's above my pay grade uh, going through that stuff but uh, typically I do bench stuff so when I was messing around with it last week I was doing all bench mode stuff but I did try the in car one too I had a tip them set up and a couple of ECUs on the on the bench and I just let it think it was in the car and I did like an all system scan and it pulled up you know the modules I had connected and thought they were in the car still so you could still do bench mode stuff like that as well but anyway that's basically all you have to do to set it up um, Word of advice, it will tell you that you need to update your micropod. I would suggest not to do it, the software update. Uh, so don't do not do that. Don't update your micropod with this software or with the WeTech software. Uh, and I think this WeTech software works too. I didn't try it, but um, I don't see why it wouldn't. This is pretty typical error. Yeah, and then you would see your thing pop up here too. And then you would, you know, go through it like that. So, yeah, I, th I think this works offline as well. Yeah, and then, you know, your stuff would pop up. You'd have to connect it. But uh, anyway, there you go. You can see it working. Uh, so, you know, if you were interested in the CDA software, this is a easy way to uh, play around with it without having to have somebody remote connected to your computer and, uh, you know, set it up for you. So.